ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Last Thoughts Media Vlog, where I talk all things money. Today, I'm going to be talking about Clover Health and be giving an update video on it, uh, discuss their last quarter, and how I feel about the company going forward. So, their revenue was up 140% year over year to $412.5 million. And this compromised of $194 million in Medicare Advantage premiums and then $260. 16.4 million in direct contracting revenue, which is a new business for them um, that wouldn't have been in their prior year figures. When they gave initial guidance about this new business line in May of this year, they only expected 20 to 30 million dollars for the whole of 2021. So this is a big positive surprise. But with direct contracting business, uh, the addition of, uh, of new business uh, or new revenue can be lumpy uh, because they're signing up various health networks such as Value H Health Network in Florida and Upward Health based out of Rhode Island. So while they may sign some big contracts uh, to beat their quarter, there isn't a, uh, a guarantee um, that they will make their numbers in the future. I expect that for them to either far exceed estimates or be far below. Uh, it's just the nature of a drug contracting business. So their total lives underneath the Clover management system has increased to 219,000 now, uh, an increase of 126.3% compared to June 30th, 2020, uh, 66K lives underneath MA, Medicare Advantage, and 62,000 lives underneath direct contracting. This growth rate is key uh, because everything for Clover, for their particular business plan, is really about data uh, for their Clover assistance software. And the more people they have covered, the more information they have. And in theory, this should help drive um, their practitioners to provide better guidance, better recommendations in taking care of their patients and hence improving MCR or the medical cost ratio for Clover Health in the long term and enhance profits, assuming that their artificial intelligence as they get more data works correctly. This is still the early days for the company, though nothing is really guaranteed and even though the company is growing quickly their medical cost ratio is not improving uh, at all um, the medical cost ratio for this quarter was 111 percent so they were actually paying out more than the premiums they were collecting and this is compared to 70.1 percent in q2 of 2020 on a normalized basis though these figures um, are 97.0 percent and 97.5 percent respectively essentially what their business would look like without covid the difference between GAAP and normalized uh, MCR include the following, direct uh, COVID-related costs, prior period development, unrealized 2020 uh, risk adjustment, and excess utilization due to COVID. Now, adjusted figures presented by companies always make me a bit nervous, and with limited visibility, it's hard to say um, whether there's any smoky mirrors. I do understand that probably they had some catch-up of people who delayed medical procedures because of COVID, when the lockdown first happened, if there was elective procedures, people would definitely skip out on it because we didn't know how truly bad um, this particular pandemic is. And now trying to, and they're now probably just trying to schedule some things that they had put off. But as far as managing costs, it's a wait and see story, in my opinion, if the AI behind the Clover Assistant will actually be successful in the long term. Anyways, um, this high MCR ended up driving uh, a loss for the company of 317 a million dollars and a negative adjusted EBITDA uh, of 138.7 million. As far as the financial guidance that the company provided for full year 2021, they're expecting revenue to be between 1.4 and 1.5 billion, um, 760 to 790 million in Medicare Advantage and 750 to 700 million in direct contracting revenue. So more or less, they're not projecting much of an acceleration from their Q2 run rate in the second half of the year. They expect their normalized medical cost ratio to be somewhere between 94 and 97%. And ultimately, they expect their EBITDA um, to be uh, negative, somewhere between two, negative 210 and negative 250 for the fiscal year. Um, and this would include no bottom line contribution from direct contracting. And they're saying this because um, they feel that they don't have enough information to be able to provide a uh, forecast as far as the bottom line for direct contracting. So this makes me wonder how they price their offerings in the first place. And perhaps um, my gut feeling is that the, this might bite them in the butt um, down the road. So some of the other metrics that they shared on the earnings call is 90, a 90% engagement rate with physicians. I assume this would mean that 90% of 
medical practitioners that are registered registered and have access to the platform are actually using it and they saw a 720 basis point improvement in their normalized medical cost ratio of returning members year over year uh, versus ones that are newer um, so this was 89.8 percent for returning members and then 97 percent for um, new members so this would um, if this is correct and calculated uh, properly then this would lead to the assumption um, that their technology their clover system their ai platform is driving savings um, but it is still early days uh, we're dealing with adjusted figures here which i mentioned already i don't i'm not fully comfortable with i want to see how this works out a little bit longer term so all in all a pretty encouraging quarter for the company from a top line perspective they're getting the top line necessary that is uh, vital to feed their virtual cycle of their Clover Assistant. Uh, to me, if you wanna buy such a stock, you're sort of making a speculative bet. In my opinion, um, a lot of faith will need to be put um, in Andrew Toy, and Andrew Toy is their president and chief technology officer at Clover Health. He's also a co-founder of a company called Divide in 2010, and this is a company that allowed people to have a work and uh, personal on uh, a single uh, smartphone device in a convenient sort of no compromise way in their own words and divide was acquired by google in 2014. he then worked uh, at google as a product lead uh, for g suite between 2014 and 2018 and it was involved in ai and machine intelligence features so there has been some criticism um, of their founding cto chris gale leaving uh, in the Hindenburg short report that targeted Clover, but in my opinion, Andrew Toy may actually be an upright tool. I, could, uh, I couldn't find very much information on Chris Gale. He does have some background in the social media space, but what he has done uh, before and after his time at Clover is a little bit unclear. All, I think, um, all in all, I think it is a speculative bet. I continue to hold my position in the company. My opinion is that if someone wants to invest in it, they shouldn't be a large piece of their portfolio. Um, until they can prove out their technology a little bit more or B, establish a positive MCR trend on a non-adjusted basis. So anyways, um, obviously I'm not your financial advisor. You do your own research. Um, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Please hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification button if you want to fo follow our channel and uh, keep updated. Uh, keep your feet on the ground, your head in the sky. Over and out.